Next guest has put ChatGPT to the test literally and wrote about her results in a new piece. This is it. Quote, ChatGPT goes to Harvard and does better than you might think. My Bodnik is here. She's an intern for the blog, Slow Boring. She's a student at Harvard. Uh, we're thrilled to have you. This is a piece that has completely and utterly gone viral, uh, and you seem to have tricked a whole number of people. Tell us what happened. Thank you for having me. AI is going to change everything, yeah. including education. I asked eight Harvard professors to grade essays. Oh. All of them were written by ChatGPT, but I told them that half were written by me in order to get good results. What happened was fascinating. And so, so what happens? ChatGPT can write at the college level. ChatGPT got almost all A's and B's, a GPA of 3.3. Now, that's below the Harvard average, but it's still well above passing. And ChatGPT is only nine months old. Imagine what will happen when it even gets to kindergarten. So is this exciting to you or scary to you? And, and by the way, we should say Jason Furman, who comes on this broadcast relatively regularly, was one of the professors uh, who you managed to uh, put one over on, though I think it was really his TA, right? I think that homework is never going to be the same ever again. What do you mean? Students are going to use ChatGPT whether they're allowed to or not. And AI detection is pretty flawed, so I don't think that's a good way of professors figuring out whether or not something was written by ChatGPT. So the only way to prevent cheating is going to be to do more in-class writing as opposed to take home, as well as uh, oral exams. What prevented the ChatGPT um, papers that you wrote from getting an A? Meaning the ones that had, where you got a, where you, they was dinged, if you will. What was, what was like the piece of it that, that didn't work? I think that the writing style was generally pretty well received, but sometimes the facts were pretty empty, which is definitely something that we've been seeing from ChatGPT. But it, the response was really interesting. Professor Furman, who you mentioned in response to my article, is getting rid of take-home essays in his classes. And I really think that the implications for this go far beyond homework. Yes. I think there's huge implications for the AI threat uh, to liberal arts careers as well. Because I think that AI isn't just coming for the college essay, it's also coming for the workplace. Does that mean he's going to make you write it out by hand? Because if you're using your computer in the classroom, everybody brings their laptops and takes notes on it. You can't use that because you could use GPT and in six seconds you have your essay anyway. So Professor Furman is getting rid of the essay component in intro economics, uh, but he is not replacing it with a written in-class exam because the class isn't that reliant on that. In other classes, like the political science classes, which I focused on, the solution would be handwritten blue book exams. Is Harvard mad at you, or did they say, yay, thanks for helping point out this problem? I haven't heard from administrators. I think professors generally were very interested. The ones like my professor, Steve Levitsky, who's a political scientist, was very happy that he managed to give it a B minus. I think <laughs> professors like Professor Furman were a little worried it did so well in their class, but they're going to figure out how to adapt. Okay, going into it, what did you think would happen relative to what did happen? I kind of had an instinct that it was going to do relatively well. I'm not surprised it got a stray B minus or a C because it makes sense that ChatGPT at this point, nine months out, is not going to be able to write a perfect political science paper on the causes of presidential crises in Latin America. I mean, I struggled a lot over that, and I've been on this earth right. a lot longer than ChatGPT. But with that being said, a lot of the stuff that I write for college is something that you really could see a machine right. doing well on. I mean, in economics, it's analyze an economic concept we've talked about in class and apply it to a real-world phenomenon. Or in my American presidency class, it was pick a president, what are their three accomplishments and three failures? And so I'm just not that surprised, I guess, that ChatGPT could do that. Okay, so how worried are you now that when you submit a paper, I mean, you personally now, not to the age of, what, that, that they're going to say, hey, we got, we, got to, we got to check your work? I don't mind if they check my work because I would never cheat with ChatGPT. I wanted to expose made, this uh, issue. It's, made, it's like the guys that do right. insider trading. Of course I would <laughs> never do that. I know it's wrong. You know, that's, that was their excuse, the famous ones. Uh, yeah, you can say, me? Like, I would do that now? You're, you're no, inoculated. But do you think that you, Thanks for calling me out, but, Joe. But I you're, appreciate you holding me accountable. You're inoculated. Do you have you're to fine. go back to Harvard? I mean, you're, so you're not, you haven't graduated yet. No, no, I actually just finished <laughs> my luck. first year. <laughs> She's got three more years. That's it. Okay, real quick, they're going to kill us. Do you imagine using ChatGPT in the next three years, though? Do you think that teachers are going to say you, that this is, some, is it acceptable and, and you're going to use it in a different way? 
My takeaway is that embracing it is very challenging because right now, nine months out, I think it's better than the average college student at writing, 3.3 GPA. So given that that's true, if it's better than the average student, how can we allow students to use it? Because at that point, it's just shortchanging critical thinking.